Good afternoon. Time is 12.03. Welcome to the Far National Bridge meeting. Uh, we will take the roll call. Present. <clears throat> Can I get a motion to excuse uh, Board Member Campero and uh, Chairman Delgadillo? So move. Second. A uh, motion by Mr. Hernandez and second by Mr. Flores. Move on to the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. We ask you to stand. And uh, Fred Rohn, please lead us in the invocation. all your heads. <coughs> Heavenly Father, in our hearts we plan our course, but we pray that you establish our steps. I pray that, that we seek you for advice. Let us not make decisions based upon what we know, but let us ask, act based upon our, your wisdom. Please guide us, Lord. We, pla we place this meeting in your hands. We place our hearts and our minds in your hands so that you may direct us. Precious Lord, this month we honor our veterans, working men and women who give their best when they are called upon to serve and protect their country. We pray that you will bless them for their unselfish service and the continued struggle to preserve our freedom, our safety, and our country's heritage for all of us. We respect them. We thank them. We honor them. We are proud of them. We pray that you will watch over these special people and bless them with peace and happiness. Amen. Amen. We'll move on to the consent agenda, approval of minutes for uh, previous meeting, October 16th, 2019. Can we get a motion? So move. Second. Motion by Mr. Hernandez and second by Mr. Flores. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Consi second, uh, consider an action in of uh, 2020 United Fresh membership dues uh, in the amount of 1750 Just. So to kind of refresh everybody's memory here with, with, with United Fresh and what it does, uh, United Fresh, we've spent, we've been members now for a little bit over two years, going on two years. Uh, United Fresh has been uh, backing up the city of FAR legislative team, the bridge team with uh, letters of support, uh, inviting the, the, the team to speak at their annual legislative conference. Uh, much of the success for the, reason for the city Acquiring federal money, state monies, has been because of the support of organizations like United Fresh. So, um, if if there's any questions on that one, the second one will be the um, renewal of the RGB Chamber of Commerce membership for $2,500. Last TIA, the Transportation Intermarries Association membership, for $660. Uh, TIA is, is much like an organization, federal national organization like uh, United Fresh, but for the transportation sector. Much like we had a uh, change in federal law that affected the transportation industry in 2017, when ELOG kicked in. Uh, organizations like TIA help save the city and the bridge money from paying, outsourcing the, some of the lobbying fees because this is what they do. So we're paying an annual membership of $600 with TIA, annual membership of $1,750 with United Fresh, but in return they lobby for us and for our customers year-round and as needed. Um, any questions here? Mm. Can we get a motion? So moved. Separate motion? On each? 
No, on, on everything. There'll be a motion for everything. Move. Second. Move to item three, the director's administrative report. Crossings and revenues for the uh, month of October. This is the first month for fiscal year 2019-2020. Uh, on page number three, we have the car crossings. Car crossings, uh, these are cars that are crossed from the U.S. to Mexico through the Far Bridge. Uh, for the month of October, we crossed a total of 46,694 cars. It presents a decrease of 18,701. We show a decrease of 28.60% compared to last year's same month. Also, like to present the crossings from other ports of entry. We have the Gateway with a loss of 4,289. Uh, Veteran Los Tomates, a loss of 765 <coughs> cars. Uh, free Trade Los Indios, they had an increase of 593 cars, 2% increase. A combination of all three bridges, a loss of 4,461 cars, which represents a decrease of 2%. Eagle Pass, they had a loss of 10,905 cars, which represents a decrease of 4%. Uh, Laredo Bridge, they had an increase of 3,568 cars, which presents an increase of 1%. The Macaron Hidalgo Bridge, they had a loss of 11,406 cars, which represents a decrease of 5%. The Anzaduas Bridge, they had an increase of 4,223 cars, which represents an increase of 6%. The Progreso Bridge, they had a loss of 6,588 cars, which represents a decrease of 14%. The Donna Bridge, they had an increase of 58 cars, which represents an increase of 0.12%. The Far Bridge, again, they had a loss of 18,701, uh, which represents a, dec a decrease of 28.60%. On page number four, we have the truck crossings. Truck crossings for the, again, these are trucks that are traveling from the U.S. to Mexico through the Far Bridge. We crossed a total of 54,301 trucks, which represents an increase of 2,173 <coughs> trucks, which show an increase of 4.17% for the month of October. Also, I'd like to, uh, also like to uh, show the uh, car truck crossing from other ports of entry uh, for the month of October. These are trucks that are traveling from the U.S. to Mexico through the Veteran Los Tomates. They had a, ne a decrease of 167 trucks, 1% decrease. Free Trade Los Indios, they had a decrease of 138 trucks, 7% decrease. A uh, combination of both bridges, a loss of 305 trucks, which represents a decrease of 1%. Eagle Pass, they had an increase of 379, 3% increase. The Laredo Bridge, they had an increase of 496 trucks, 0% increase compared to last year. The Far Bridge, we had an, uh, an increase of 2,173 trucks, 4% increase. The Progreso Bridge, they had an increase of 2,546 trucks, which represents an increase of 61%. And on St. Louis Bridge, again, these are crossings from 3 in the afternoon to 10 p.m. These are empty trucks, and they had a loss of 889 trucks, which represents a decrease of 30%. I'd like to mention that for the past, since January of, 20, uh, of 2019, this month will be 11 months. Uh, the Yanza Duas Bridge has been using a lot of trucks through uh, going southbound, going to Mexico. And this is the 11 month they, in a row they had lost crossings compared to last year, same month. And we, we had a, our occasional dips in the, uh, in the summertime, which is normal when we lose ag trucks, exactly. what have you. But, but 11 months straight, what? Yeah. What we lost one month out of the uh, fiscal year 2018, 2019. I think we lost one month only on trucks. Right. And Sadua has been losing uh, every single month since the uh, beginning of the year. What's so the consistency or what's uh, the... Uh, board member Mar Martinez, uh, honestly, there is no value in crossing empty trucks to Mexico. So we have a truck here that wants to, I mean, why pay a toll to cross an empty truck? There is no value in crossing empty trucks. So that's my already the, the, the main reason as to why they're, oh, okay. they're losing trucks. Wow. On uh, page number five, we have the northbound. These are trucks that are traveling from Mexico to the U.S. to the Far Bridge. Total crossing, we have a 58,887 trucks, which represent 
an increase of 2,040 trucks. We show an increase of 3.59%. On the agriculture side, the part, uh, International Bridge total 14,905 crossings for the month of October, representing 25% of all the imports that are coming from Mexico to the U.S. On the same note, the agriculture trucks at the part, you know, the International Bridge uh, import line <coughs> show an increase of 478 Trucks increase over the same month, fiscal year 2018-2019, representing a 3% growth compared to last year, same month. On uh, page number six, we have the revenues, total revenue collected for the month of October. We collected a total of $1,274,663, representing an increase of $56,593. We show an increase of 4.65%. Overall, board members, uh, Chairman, uh, very good month, even though we lost cars again, but it's, it's a trend uh, from Laredo all the way to uh, Brownsville, uh, with the exception for a couple of bridges, but uh, so far it was a very good month. And that concludes my report for uh, progress and revenues. Fred, all the tows take effect November? The tows? All the tows. <coughs> the, uh, the, the increase that we had, it, it uh, took effect on October. October. It's October. We went up on the cars on August, uh, first of August, and then uh, on the on the cars, and then on, on the trucks only on the AVI trucks, not on the cash or the, uh, or the ticket, but only on the AVIs took effect October the first. Yes, sir. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Move on to uh, item B, the finance report for October two thousand nineteen. We. Uh, Carla Saavedra is here in case she has any. Yeah, Carla, I know we, uh, we've been having the issues with Kronos. Uh, do you have any comments, Carla? That, uh, or Inco, I'm sorry. Or Inco? <laughs> uh, do you have uh, any comments on the uh, total uh, revenues that we closed for the month, for the year? Well, we were in, we, we went in solid so yeah. Did it help you? Yeah, last meeting we were in budget when we closed the fiscal year, so everything looked good. Perfect. Uh, we'll move on to uh, item C, engineer's report. Omar Anzaldua is here to help answer any questions or update us on any anything that's changed. Good, after, good afternoon, members of the board. Uh, I'm going to give an update on a few projects. First project is the, uh, the International Bridge Administration Office, which is under construction right now. We started going vertical on the expansion addition. Looks like we're going to start working on adding that roof section this week, and so <coughs> still estimated to be completed sometime in February with the you know 100% complete. So right now we're at about 60% complete. The other project is the FY15 DAP project, which is the northbound lanes and the second BSIF exit. That one is scheduled to rebid in January of 2020. We went out for bids back in June, and we got one bidder, and it was over budget. We, we think, you know, rebidding it after the holidays will attract more contractors. So we're anticipating of bidding that out in January. And then the other project, which is the FY16, which is the dry dock, the cold inspection facility, and the Ag Lab. Those are, the design is 100% complete. We're still waiting on finalizing the donations acceptance agreement with GSA, as well as getting an AFA from Techstop for the funding which has already been allocated, you know, the, their contribution to this. So we're looking at going out for bids probably sometime in the fall of, of 2020 to kind of stagger these projects since there's going to be a lot of construction activity. We want to uh, stagger them uh, sequentially so, you know, we're not interrupting too much of the bridge traffic. So that concludes my report. If there's any questions. Perfect. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, last, we move on to the uh, director's report. Yes, uh, board members, for the record, for the Bowen director of operations, we have uh, uh, Mexico's de Asan, uh, uh, Mr. Ezequiel Ordonez, will give us an update on the quarter report for the, <coughs> the month of September and October. Mr. Ezequiel. Buenas tardes. Buenos días. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Eh, gracias. Okay. Para el récord de Ezequiel Ordóñez, eh, buen día, Mr. Chairman, miembros del Consejo, City Manager, pero no estaba. <risa> Les comentaré algunas de las reuniones y eventos que hemos puntualizado durante los meses anteriores, más importantes en los meses anteriores, eh, ya que este, 
para que sepan dónde hemos estado haciendo tanto promoción como lobbying, como eh, lo que es, ha servido para incrementar los cruces. Bueno, en, en esta primera etapa estuvimos aquí en la ciudad de Far con las dos compañías de ingeniería que van a realizar estudios. Fue una reunión, pues la verdad fue técnica, fue rápida, para que ellos dieran a conocer cuál es su background de cada compañía y que han trabajado. Y realmente estas dos, mismas, estas dos compañías son las que hicieron desde el origen hace 25 años los estudios, por eso fueron las invitadas. Eh, segundo, fue un evento que atendimos y participamos como panelistas en el USMCA, el agreement, the agreement con el RGB Partnership, donde participó Luis como director del puente y, y estuvimos coordinando también este evento. Eh, estuvimos en la ciudad de Monterrey, como somos miembros del Comse eh, Noreste, eh, nos, nos invitaron a participar en el Comse Nacional, en el cual estuvimos con un congresista, que es Henry Cuellar, que estuvimos con el director general de aduanas y estuvimos participando durante dos, tres días en eventos con ellos. Eh, realmente este, este, este consejo que existe en México, lo, um, están los grupos comerciales y grupos eh, industriales más importantes del noroeste y también de México. Un ejemplo de ellos podría hablar de FEMSA, que son los de la Coca-Cola, eh, Bimbo, podría comentar de la cervecería modelo, que es el que preside, que fue el que nos invitó realmente el presidente de, de, este, de este consejo, es eh, Díez Morodo, fue una invitación que nos hizo cordial y directa al puente para participar. Eh, son, ellos son los dueños de la cervecería modelo en todo el mundo. Um, segunda, tuvimos, eh, eh, como, el, como les platicaba en las reuniones anteriores, ha habido muchos cambios en la, en la administración federal en el área mexicana, y bueno, pues nos dimos a la tarea de tanto de buscar y, y extender la invitación a la directora regional de Capufe, que es la que encargada de puentes fronterizos y, y caminos y autopistas del lado mexicano. Ella le corresponde en tres estados, que es Nuevo León, Coahuila y Tamaulipas, y ella es la que es nuestra contraparte del lado mexicano federal, que es eh, la del peaje. Bueno, pues la invitamos e hicimos un... Eh, una reunión junto con CBP para tocar algunos eh, puntos arriba del puente, que ellas son, la que, ellas son las que coordinan arriba del puente, igual que CBP. Eh, bueno, fue una reunión bastante prove de provecho y productiva, ya que se extendieron unas horas eh, durante las semanas que estuvimos aquí para abrir el puente. También recibimos a una compañía de Scantec, ya están instalados en Mission, ella hace revisiones y certificaciones para eh, el área de Produce, eh, nada más que ellos, vino la, el corporativo y quiso platicar con nosotros de ver la forma de hacer la inversión también en el área de FAR, ¿verdad? que es donde está todo el área de Produce o es, es donde está el acceso. Um, en Reynosa, bueno, pues estuvimos coordinando junto a TexDOT, eh, lo que es el eh, TexDOT, Texas México Border Most, eh, Transportation Master Plan. Este es un programa que tiene el, el gobierno estatal de TexDOT, para, eh, para, efin, ef, para hacer estudios, eficientizar los accesos, realizar carreteras del lado americano y en esta parte nos tocó coordinar con ellos porque estuvimos invitando también tanto a la, pre, a la presidenta municipal de, de, de Reynosa como al gobierno federal, como al gobierno del estado para tocar temas relevantes en, el, en lo que son los accesos o los puentes para hacer un, el master plan regional. La verdad fue bastante provechosa y y pues esperemos que tengamos una segunda reunión. Bueno, nada más para hacer este comentario y, y no dejar pasar que tuvimos el, el inicio de la estación de, de Produce, en la cual pues estuvimos todos, yo no, ¿verdad? Pero pues les agradezco que estuve ahí también con ellos. Eh, la segunda fue lo que comentaba de la United Fresh, que es una asociación en el área americana que la verdad funciona bastante porque llegan todas las asociaciones o presidencias, pre, las, las presidencias de los consejos de los productores o de, digo, de los productos precederos, así es, ¿no? Así Mango, es. Eh, pongamos eh, tomate, todos ellos van y toman decisiones en Estados Unidos por lo de los dumping o temas de exportación o importación a Estados Unidos. La verdad fue, eh, aparte de hacer una presentación o una de promoción, fue también un lobbying que bueno, pues el vicepresidente 
el vice chairman pudo eh, constatar, igual con Luis Bazán. Y bueno, la última fue, estuvo en Miami, bueno, la anterior fue en Washington, y la última fue en, en Miami, que fue la de, eh, se atendió a lo que es, eh, con Inbound Logistics, tenemos una, eh, como un partnership o una relación, esta revista que hace promoción en todo México y en Estados Unidos, <coughs> para re realizar lo que es, eh, en Estados Unidos y México, lo que es eh, lo, Logistics and Supply Chain, son puros líderes y van puros corporativos y presidencias y CEOs a estos eventos. Realmente, la verdad es que también esto es algo provechoso porque son los que toman decisiones de arriba hacia sus, hacia sus oficinas o hacia sus empresas o corporativos hacia abajo. La verdad es que nos ha funcionado bastante bien y hemos contactado como Ryder, que estaba en Laredo y hasta aquí con nosotros, está en Far Instalada, Colliers, eh, por tocar algunos AMPI, que es el de los, eh, la asociación de... Eh, parques industriales, tanto en México, y nos ha funcionado bastante bien en este tema, ¿verdad? Pues eso es, si tienen alguna pregunta, algo para servirles. ¿no? no, igual, uh, just want to make one point, and uh, a lot of these events, check it, they took place in the third quarter of the year, you know, let the record show, third quarter of the year typically is, is one of the slowest as far as volume traffic goes for the bridge, but this is just a highlight of how busy the team has been. Um, and, and just the time that you were out, Cheque, you, we felt it. Sure. So the, just, the, you know, I mean, you saw pictures on the screen from, of meetings from D.C. down to Mexico. So at no point, just because it's slower, did the team ever slow down. Hell, even, even the board was part of some of those events, you know. So and, and the point is, whether it's slow and as we're heading into the busy season, the pace doesn't stop. So, in if you guys can uh, share the agenda for what we have for for the upcoming uh, fiscal year, it, it's 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 probably more condensed than the previous year, right? So uh, the, the the fruit is in the works. And again, thank you for everything you do. Check in. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, for the, thank you, sir. With with that note, <coughs> Fred, we also want to mention the uh, the uh, yes, a uh, couple couple more meetings. Do you have the bridge connect? So, on 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 the note of, of of the great work that's being done, lobbying meetings, what have you, uh, the the last bridge connect, uh, we we had the uh, Mr. Ken Roberts of World City, who is the person in charge of publicating the trade numbers pretty much for the entire country, every major land sea airport hires Ken Roberts, he's kind of like the data guy for, uh, for anything having to do with trade. Uh, he was here, unfortunately I was not able to make it, but we did hear some exciting news and it's basically that, that the Far International Bridge is now the third most important land port in the United States of America. Between Mexico and the U.S., uh, the Far Bridge is number three. Used to, last year we were number four, now we're number three. Yeah. So again, more great news, getting even busier, taking care of the logistics here at home, <coughs> taking care of expansions, making sure we're within budget. Exactly. A lot of things going on at the same time, but again, hats off to everybody for, for the great work. And again, now the third most important bridge, still the number one port of entry for produce. It's just gonna keep growing and growing as, as the time comes by. I'd like to uh, thank the board and the commission and the mayor for your continued support to approving, uh, approving us the, uh, the flight, the, 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 uh, the events that we have in the U.S. and in Mexico as well. Uh, thank you all for the support. Thank you to, thanks for to, to the mayor and the commission for the tremendous support that they, ha they give us and they allow us to travel into Mexico and the U.S. as well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Next, we have, uh, as you know, we have a Veterans Day parade that it was uh, celebrated on uh, November the 9th, and uh, pues we won first prize. Yay! <laughs> guys. Uh, we, uh, I'd like to give thanks to uh, Vanessa, Cleo, our maintenance employees, Mr. E Eric Rodriguez, and Mr. Juan Lazos, who are the, the, the Gary as well, Gary Rodriguez as well, uh, Gary, Gary Casares, I'm sorry. Oh, Gary Cas uh, not, not really help, us, uh, help us uh, uh, with the float, and these are some of the pictures that um, that we uh, uh, presented. Uh, and this is the prize that we was awarded to That's awesome. first place. 
Thank you, Cleo. Good Thank job, you, guys. Vanessa. That's great. For the tremendous help and support. That's great. Thank yeah. you, guys. Good job. And thank you, Vanessa. Good job. Good job. And last but not least, uh, we are on December 13. Uh, we're going to have our um, uh, the uh, the celebration of the 25-year anniversary of the city uh, Far International Bridge celebrating 25 years. This uh, past week, we completed 25 years of service to the community through the trade, and also we're celebrating the customer appreciation for uh, on December 13 of uh, this December. And uh, that's it. Uh, I don't have anything else to comment. And Fred, so if the bridge has been open 25 years, that means your time in service has been 25 years. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good job, Fred. <laughs> I would like it's to get that uh, picture where Fred is is came out on the monitor collecting the first last, toll. Uh, last week, I uh, started working as a toll collector uh, back in November 1994, and last week I completed 25 years of service. Uh, very honored, very proud to work for the city of Far, uh, work at the bridge department. That's Thank great. You Thank, you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Fred. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well. It, and it's great to end in such a such a positive note. So so many things that happened this last quarter, with with the trips, the great news from Ken Roberts, and these these are facts. Yes. This is data that's that that he does. He is the go-to guy for all the the ports of entry, and to show that the bridge is continue to grow, uh, and its level of importance is is uh, is you know there, there's no words. It's great to be a part of the organization. It's great to be a part of the city. And uh, again, thanks to, to, to the support that we have from the mayor, the commission, uh, but especially the staff. You guys are nonstop all the time, and you guys don't let it down when, 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 even when numbers are low. One month, you know, we still came out on top. We still met our, 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 our overall budgets, and uh, the travel never stopped. I mean, my third quarter was extremely busy just trying to keep up with, with, with you guys. Uh, fourth quarter, and I, I can't go with you guys. You guys are too much, man. But, <laughs> but it's it's a great testament, and and the numbers speak for themselves. That that that's why we are heading in the direction that we're heading. Great job. If I may, Chairman, yes, members of the board, um, I was an integral part of the creation of this bridge. Yes, sir. As a former regional administrator, Fidencio Barrera being the mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, Polo Palacios being the commissioner when they came to see me in, in GSA. And uh, to everybody's surprise, 25 years later, of course, this happened in 1990 when we finally got the appropriation that we needed from GSA with the clearance of our client agencies at that time, of course, Customs. Homeland Security didn't exist at that time, that conceptually they wanted a regional commercial port. At that time, the, the, the federal agencies felt that it was necessary to have regional commercial ports of entry rather than every single port being a commercial activity because it, it was, um, it, it was, um, detrimental to the FTE requirements, the rent requirements that they have to rent, they have to pay to the GSA, and, uh, and the expenses of operating uh, commercial bridges. And so the uh, whole idea of, at that time, was to develop this bridge as a commercial regional bridge. And it obviously has become a, a reality. But more importantly, having said that, the regional, the original appropriations of port of new ports of entry, which included Los Tomates, which included Los, Los Indios, Lucio Blanco, uh, Colombia Solidarity Bridge, um, just to name a few, is the uh, the Isleta Zaragoza Bridge in El Paso. This particular port of entry was not in the radar screen in Congress. Wow. It so happened that at the time, uh, the original appropriations that had been, had been made 
for GSA to expand and improve existing ports of entry and then adding new ones, which we did. Um, and after everything was said and done, uh, there was some money left over, like around 50, 60 million dollars, after all the bids were awarded. That's what made it happen, that's what made it happen for, for far in that we were able to go back to Congress, to the Senate, to the House, and reprogram that money to provide the necessary monies for a new port of entry, which was City of Far, oh. uh, 27, 28 years ago. <coughs> anyway, little tidbit. Real quick, oh. Mr. Rutledge. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rutledge. You said 1990, but it actually started before when you all started uh, 78. in 78. Yeah, in, in, in 78. Well, you had the permit. Right. Donna had the permit. Far had a permit. Uh, there were about two or three others that had a, a presidential permit during the Jimmy Carter era, <coughs> but but it, it was not until 1990 mm -hmm. that we were able to reprogram some of that money and be able to make it a reality. And I remember when when the city of Far announced it, I had. I had calls from neighboring communities, not to, <laughs> not to mention who they were, wanting to find out uh, what far was smoking. <laughs> and I said, well, they ain't smoking anything. <laughs> this is the real thing. <laughs> what do you mean? And it was, I said, by that time it was signed, sealed, and delivered. It so Good anyway, it was, um, it was a great, a great hist history in the, in, in FAR with the change, the configuration sure. of FAR forever. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Thank you, Alice. Thank and, you. Thank and, you. And, and well, you thank you for uh, everything you've done for, for the city and history. you continue to do. Thank you. For the city. Well, thank you. I'd like, just like to add that back then when we opened the bridge, we only closed uh, close to 100 trucks a day, uh, northbound and southbound. Right now we're crossing 2,500 to 3,000, almost 3,000 trucks on a daily basis, northbound. Okay. Southbound, another 2,500. So we come a long, long ways. So Absolutely. Very yeah, good that's great. For us. Uh, back then, we used to collect about twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month, fifty thousand dollars a month. Right now, we're collecting a million dollars, over a million dollars every single month. Wow. That concludes our report. Uh, board members, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Anything else I'm missing? All right. Let's have a motion to dismiss. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Hernandez. Second by. Mr. Flores, all in favor? Aye. Motion Aye. passes. Aye. Thank you. Wow. That was quick. What's up? You didn't say anything? Oh, you. Vamos. Two fifteen minutes.